Okay, well, I wanted to quickly give you a, a real run-through of plotting points on a graph where you have an x-axis and a y-axis. Now, uh, well, here's some axes right here. So you can see that the, the horizontal one we usually call x, and the vertical one we call y. And we number them in a standard way. Where they intersect is the point that's 0 on both of these number lines. And then as we march off this way, this becomes positive values. This would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And then up here, we would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if my video monitor would be go on forever, you would see the negative things here, negative 1, and then negative 2, and negative 3, and negative 1, and then negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. And actually, the, the whole plane, this whole Cartesian plane, is actually broken up into four quadrants. Quadrants, four. And this is called the first quadrant, where everybody's positive. The second quadrant is where the x's are negative, but the y's are still positive. The third quadrant is a very negative space. Everybody's negative there. And the fourth quadrant is a little bit happier because the x's are positive, but now the y's are negative. OK, we'll talk more about that later. Um, and then when we plot points, the convention always is to give them as a pair, the x first and then the y. And we'd write it in the following way. For example, suppose I wanted to plot the point uh, 4, 5. I'd write it like this. Now, we've got to be a little teeny bit careful, because even though mathematicians are really fastidious and you know, really retentive, um, sometimes there are problems. And this is an example of one, because it's a notational issue. Do you remember how we represent interval notation? Well, if I just showed you that all by itself and covered up everything here like that, see how I'm covering everything up? You can't see it. Well, what is that? Well, those could be an ordered pair, 4, 5 that you're going to graph on a Cartesian plane. Or it could be interval notation for all the points between 4 and 5, but not including the endpoints. Remember all that stuff? So you've got to be really careful. Now, it turns out, happily, mathematicians aren't that crazy. And when they give something like that, they would never do it with their arms like this. When they do it, in fact, their arms would be down here by their sides. So you always know the context in which this thing is given. And so you'll know whether that symbol means an ordered pair First do 4, then do 5, or if it's an interval. But it's a good thing to watch out for because it will be confusing if you're not sort of up on that. OK, well, where would this thing go? Well, we go 4 over in the, in the x direction, bloop, and then you go 5 up. So it'd be 4 over, bloop, and then 5 up. Bloop. And so what I do is I put a dot right around there. Boom. There's my dot. Easy as pie. Now, you can graph a whole bunch of dots at once if you wanted to. For example, let me show you that real fast. So suppose that you wanted to, I'm going to move my axes. Move your axes. How many times have you heard that? <laughs> I don't know. If I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I might have a buck. OK. Suppose that I wanted to graph something and some, some data. You know, we're given data. So for example, I thought I'd give you a, an actual real world example of data. I gave a midterm a while back. And I thought it'd be fun to count how many students come into my office for help, for office hours, before the exam and then after the exam and compare. So in fact, I'm going to put the data right there in my box here. Let's take a look at it together, shall we? OK, so you can see that in the left-hand column, I have the days uh, to or from the exam. And notice that the negative sign there, for example, that first data point is minus 7, 0. So the minus 7 means it's seven days before the actual exam. Okay? And the 0 tells me how many students actually came. So minus 7 days, so a week before the exam. Of course, no one's there because no one's studying until the night before. So no one came by my office. Now let's see. The next, time, next piece of data that I collected there was uh, 4 days before the exam. And so with minus, so minus 4. And there, 2 people came to my office. And then you can read down the thing, minus 2 days before. So 2 days before the exam, 1 person came. Notice that the day before the exam, minus 1, I, had, I was swamped. My office was basically filled. The floor almost gave way because I had 10 people there. Notice that even zero, that's the day I gave the exam. Someone actually came in early, snuck in, and there were three people that wanted you know, last minute help. And then notice the next day, the first day after the exam, no one came by. That's one zero, and you can see what happens. By the way, you might notice that on the, and then people, of course, complained about their grades. So you can see on the third day, five people came in because I passed back the exam. They were not happy. And then the fourth day, actually, I have a student who has a child. And so she brought the child along. And so in fact, I count that as one and a half people. OK, well, let's plot that and see what all that looks like if you want to sort of put that on a, on a chart here. So I'll set up some axes. So here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And let's see. So I have minus 7, let's say, over here, minus 7. 
And now I've got to put in between minus 7 and 0. This is, by the way, a great challenge if you're doing this live on the fly, as we're doing here. So you know how I do this? I say, well, this is minus 7, so that means that the middle here has to be around here. So I'm going to mark this off, because how many will I need? I think I'll need an odd number of points in here, right? The midpoint here would be like around here, so just play with me here for a second. So let's see, minus 7, minus 6, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. Wow! Now, if you're not impressed by that, I'm sorry, I've got nothing going to show you. Okay, so this is now minus 1, minus 2, and so on. I'm not going to mark them all in here. And then we're going to go all the way out. If you look on the chart there, uh, I'm going to go to 4, so let me just mark them. But I'm going to keep the same distance just to keep sort of consistency. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, the positive x-axis represents the days after the exam. The 0 uh, here, the y-axis represents the actual day of the exam, and the negative represents the days before the exam. Okay, and let's plot here, and I'll put some numbers here. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, and let's just plot away. So you can see the list there. The first one up is minus 7 days, so a week before the exam, no one came by. So minus 7, 0. So I put a dot right there. Uh, the next one up is minus 4, 2, so I go minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 2, 1, 2, so I put a dot right there. And then I see minus 1, 10, so the, I'm sorry, oh no, my, I, I must have one, I missed one, minus 2, minus 2 I had one person, so minus 2 I had one person, a little dip, and then minus 1 the day before the exam, how many, I, I can't see, I have to sort of get over the screen here, go over the screen. It looks like there's 10 people. So I go way up here, 10. Look at that. Woo! That's the day to buy, or sell, actually. And then the day of the exam, I have three people. And then the next day, I've got nobody. Nobody came around. And the next day, I had nobody, so 2, 0. Put that point there. And then finally, I pass back the exam. People are not happy. So on the third day, people are complaining. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then on the fourth day, this person came with her child, and so that's one and a half. So I actually go one, and then not quite two, I go right in the middle there. That's one and a half. Let me just really emphasize that and make sure you see that. That is right in between there and there, and I'd write that as one and a half. Oops, no, I wouldn't write it that way because that would be putting the y first. You see, that's a great mistake that people would make, like myself. But that's wrong. What I want to do is actually make it first four, because we put the x's first, and then one and a half. Plotting points on the coordinate plane, piece of cake.